a minute to 12. We'll start the meeting. Uh, roll call. Black. Here. 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 Uh, approval of minutes for the May 2nd meeting. I move we approve the minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Bills and communications. Approval of accounts payable. Questions here? Braden? No questions for me. I move we approve. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We're going to go down to six and get the uh... Joe. Yes. Hi, Paul. Hi. We are ready. All right. Sounds great. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Joe Nagram from Revised Government Websites. Uh, Paul asked me, uh, or I should back up and say, recently we did a survey with 48 economic development corporations and authorities, and basically he didn't want a sales presentation. He wanted me just to give the information of what happened in, in the survey and what your peers are doing and to give some examples of those items uh, from design, functionality, and editing of the website. So that's my agenda of today. And if anybody wants to add in, wants me to add in anything or has any questions during the demonstration, uh, feel free to do that. Well, uh, does just, that sound good, Paul? That sounds good, but just a minute. Let me figure out where I put you. What's that, Bill? Which one? This one? No. No, you already. Huh. Go to a web meeting. Down. There he is. Okay, we can see you now. Okay, hi everybody. Hey. <laughs> so um, I'll go ahead and get started. But if anybody has any questions or observations, uh, you know, we learn from what you um, can tell us as well. So we'll make this a, a dual experience. Uh, my whole presentation won't be any longer than about a half an hour. But if you need detailed information on any specific facet, just let me know. Sounds good? Corey. Sounds good. Sure. Okay. All right. So we'll get started. So just a little bit about us so you know we have some credibility. Uh, we've been building government and government agency websites for the last 20 years, and we're known nationwide. Uh, we do a lot of work in the economic development field, but we also do a lot of work with municipalities and uh, counties, county agencies, et cetera. Uh, we have over 1,200 clients nationwide. This is the results <laughs> right here. So we did this survey. We had an independent consultant do the survey because when we started doing it as revised, we were getting you know, tainted information. They were telling us what we wanted to hear. We didn't want that. So we interviewed 48 different executive directors. Sometimes their board was in on the interviews as well. And under anonymity, they opened up and told us everything that they're trying to do with their website. Out of the 48 interviews, there were five common threads. So I'm going to go over each one of them with you right now. And if you have any specific questions on any of these, uh, let me know. The very first thing that uh, they told us is when they were analyzing their website behavior, they were finding on out that over 64% of web visitors were coming to their website um, specifically on smartphones, uh, not PC tablets or computers, desktop computers. Actually, desktop computers ended up being only about 8 or 9 percent. Uh, so anyway, they want what's called a responsive web design for their website. So it looks great on any size screen, 
and looks great on any device whatsoever. In particular, uh, they wanted to make sure it had programming for every browser, because every browser approximates a website differently. And they wanted to bring in the branding. They noticed a lot of web design firms, when it went to uh, a mobile version, just went to text. They're trying to inspire developers and, um, and, um, and um, investors to want to come to their area and see what's available. So the branding has to be brought into the responsive web design view. The second thing they indicated is they want it to be a self-help communication center. They want the website to be able to take care of the everyday questions and information and everything, so it reduces a lot of uh, incoming phone calls, but gets them a lot of information uh, immediately so they can start making decisions before they make that first phone call to you. And we'll show you some great examples in regards to that. Some of the things in particular they thought were important was a document center with a search bar. They can just type on in. Maybe have a document center of available properties. They can type on in what they're looking for. It pulls right on up. They wanted to have a frequently asked questions center. So all the questions that are asked on a daily basis, the information's right there at 11 o'clock at night when they're thinking about it and they can't go to sleep. They want to reorganize the navigation into what's called web audience centers. They want to analyze the different profiles of audiences coming there. So if you're a developer, you click over here. If you're an existing business, you click over here. And then you have an area of the websites catered specifically for their needs. Another item is, is that with the fast-paced uh, lifestyle of these individuals, you know, they wanted to catch alerts and have more communications with the economic development uh, authority or corporation. So they want to be able to have an area where maybe they can type on in some information and depending on the information that gets sent to the right individual, so they can um, email or give them a call back and answer their question. The third item has to do with social media. A lot of these individuals are using LinkedIn to communicate with their colleagues or sometimes Facebook and they want to share information. So basically the way they, what they want to do is take the news center of their website and have it integrated with their Facebook and Twitter so when they put in a new announcement in the news center, all three of them are simultaneously updated. It saves them the time of logging in three times and from a marketing manager's viewpoint, you want to have the same message no matter what medium is it's being broadcast to, so it helps to do that. The second thing is they want to allow these web visitors to pull information from the website and share it with their colleagues. So they can go to a page, again, maybe it's an available property, maybe it's a new tax incentive, you know, to relocate your business there. And they want to pull that content to their colleagues, so maybe they pull it out of the website, it's into LinkedIn, and share it with all their colleagues and say, hey, we should take a further look into this. So they want to have the capabilities of doing that with what's called a, a share this uh, social media app. I'll show you what that looks like. The fourth item is the website presence. They're finding out, uh, and I believe you guys are trying to get your own website away from the city, correct? No. What we would be is we would be a subset within the overall city website. Okay. One thing for you to consider, is there a problem for you to have a separate website? Um, I think Josh just said it. We don't. That's not something that we would really like to do. We are part of the city, and we'd like to stay part of the city. Okay, just something for you to consider. You can do that and have your own website within the city. What we're finding out from other economic development corporations, even though they're part of the city, by having a separate website and they link to the city, and the city links for them, both websites have a higher web presence, and. Sometimes, you know, you may want to do some promotions or, or on your website, and since you're a separate website, you have the leeway of doing that. If you're part of the city's website, you have a lot of standards that you have to fall under, you know, the city's regulations because you're part of the city website. Either way, you can have your own look and feel within the website or separate, but it's just something for you to think about. So the third item right here, or fourth item, is in regards to the web presence. They want to have a larger web presence so that when they add pages or put in new programs, they get a higher search engine attraction to those pages. So they want the capability of setting their own keywords 
Uh, so that way, if you do put in municipal and center for company relocation, well, they just type that into the Google search bar or push it right to that page. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. And the last item is the look and feel of the website. Um, from actually talking to investors and developers at um, economic development summits, we're finding it out that they want a clean website, less text, but more buttons to get to what they're looking for. And I'll show you some examples of that. Are, are there any questions in regards to this information? No. No. Okay. Again, I'm just giving you food for thought. You make the decisions of what's going to be the best for you. So I, if I sounded adversarial, I wasn't being that way. I'm just sharing information. One thing about web hosting, you'll definitely want to make sure that you have as redundant server farms so you never lose your data. And that if you're editing the website, make sure it's on a server that's behind the firewall. Because if you're editing on the server, it tends to slow down the performance of the website if you have a lot of people you know, uh, on the website at the same time. So that's something that you'll want to uh, consider. Okay. So this is your portion of the website that you have here today. This is an example of Rutherford County Economic Development Center. The biggest objective here is no one knows where Rutherford County is. So a lot of economic development corporations and authorities are having a bit of a picture uh, on the home page so people know where it's at, where they're close to be located, and then they can go to the different types of information, whether it's industry sectors, they service, available properties, quality of life, just quickly and easily right from the home page. When you scroll down, one thing too is um, last year was the year of no scrolling, you keep everything at the top. Because everybody's on smartphones now, there's not a problem with scrolling anymore. So if you have any other highlights or information that you want to tell everybody about, you can do that on the rest of the page. This is Webster City, Iowa Economic Development. A uh, great way they try to show off their bit of an industrial or manufacturing mecca here. Uh, featured properties right here. These are the ones that have just come up for sale. You can click over here and learn more about those properties recent news and information. As you can see, everything is really clean, but uh, right at your fingertips. This is Lapeer Corporation. What's really nice about here is they have their own little club of people talking about the economic situation, uh, trends, and things of this nature, so you can join the club over here. If you're existing business, this is the web audience center you go to on how you can take the existing programs and grow your business. If you're starting a business, you can go here. What I really like is the available properties area. You know, you can take a look at what properties are available, click on it, and then a spec sheet comes on up with the pricing and the people to contact. I'm going to show you now what the economic development uh, designs are looking for 2017. It's a little bit different layout because of the new technologies for mobile phones again. You know, at the same time, this is built around uh, best practices uh, for the web visitors that come to an economic development website. So this is a design in progress right now for the city of Converse, Texas. If you know anything about Converse, Texas, they're a very quick up and coming city. Uh, they're just outside San Antonio. So they just received a nice grant to really promote to get more uh, business into the area. So we're currently developing their website, and this is this design. The right over here is a rotating photo gallery. They may end up putting a rotating video. I'll show you what that looks like in there, because they're finding that people, when they come to the website as a rotating video, that it's a captive audience. Everyone wants to finish that video. Make sure it's no longer than 10 to 15 seconds, but can really give them a sense of feeling of what it's like to live there and work there and play there. I'll show you an example of that in a moment. This is the navigation. It's going to be a locking navigation. So when you start scrolling a little bit farther down, it's going to stay at the top. This is great for older individuals and for people on your website. They don't feel they've lost control. You definitely want to have areas of live, work, and play and connecting up so that way they can get a sense and feel of what it's like to live there. Over here, they're going to put in you know, different types of information, what's happening, you know, you know, why come to Congress. So they have all different types of information here. So the whole idea is to have buttons to get to the information rather than the navigation. Uh, this is what you know, these visitors are requesting. 
less text, more buttons to get to where they want. As far as news, this is good. you don't really want any more than three. In this case, we have four, but no more than three or four news items. We're hearing if you have any more than that, they won't read the first one. It's just too busy. And same thing for upcoming events. Another thing we're finding out is if you associate a picture with the news item, you'll get a 33% increase of them actually reading the article. And then over here, these are the five items that people or investors or developers will look at before they will make that even first phone call. So you want to have those buttons right in front of them. And over here are the upcoming available properties. Again, this is a design in progress right now for Converse. Any questions in regards to design before I uh, go ahead and, um, and continue on with functionality? None. Nope. Okay. So here's an example of a video intro. So with Logan, Utah, they have an economic development corporation that's part of the city. So essentially a nice video over here. We're finding with Google Analytics that 93% of individuals that come to this website watch the video in its entirety. Uh, in 15 seconds, it shows what it's like to live there, work there, play there. It's very, very compelling. Here's the lock navigation I was telling you about before. Slight animations for middle-aged individuals helps them to focus on the website better. Again, uh, uh, putting a picture with a news article really does wonders. A take action center for things that people do on a daily basis is there. But here is the economic development center. Again, the same five properties that people will look at before they even make that first phone call. So in regards to Logan, um, you know, we made that part of the home page, and that's really helping them out a lot. So if there's a way you can do that on your home page or a link to come right to you and then have this type of presentation on your home page, it will be very instrumental for you. As far as features and functionality as part of the website, uh, rule of thumb is having a home page alert or announcement center. And just use it, you don't want to use it every day, just when there's important things you want people to know about. This link here will go to a landing page of more information, and they can click on out of it. Of course, you may want them to sign up for email or text alerts, so when that comes on up, they're all notified. Calendars are great if you have a lot of events, and you'll want to separate them into different types of activities, and then have them all roll up to a master calendar. Other features like the iCal feature, so they can upload the feature uh, event into their personal calendar is a really nice thing to have. Document centers. With the document center, what you'll want to do is have different categories of documents that they can peruse by clicking on a title. And it can be not just documents, but hyperlinks to websites. But what's really important is a search box. So they can type in which document they're looking for, hit search, and it comes right up for them. So one of the things that they talk about is how can we keep our constituents involved without them having to come to the website whatsoever? And that's by utilizing the e-notify center. What you do is you put in the pages of importance, events of importance in here, and then your constituents can put in their email address and their phone number, and then now they can select which events they want to text alert and which ones they want to email. The key to success here are two things. Number one, they manage their subscriptions, and they can unsubscribe whenever they want. You don't have to get involved. And then number two, they select what they are interested in. So you're not getting notifications on everything that's happening in the EDC, just the things that they're thinking about. So this was really important. Social media, a couple things you can do. Do you guys have both a Facebook and a Twitter? No. OK. If you go that route, if you feel like you want to bring your tweets or your Facebook announcements to your home page, you'll be able to do that. At the very least, you can have your news center that when you update a news item, they'll simultaneously update all three for you. Another nice thing that you won't use, but your constituents will, is the social media sharing app. What they'll do is go to a page of importance, <coughs> and then let's say they want to share this with their colleagues. They can go ahead and share it on Facebook or their own personal Twitter, print it, email it. And when you hit plus, it opens it up to all the different social media. So here goes LinkedIn, you know. So this doesn't limit them to what they want. 
to show you how it works is if you click on Facebook, it's opening up my personal Facebook, and it just brought in the content from that website, Opportunities from Involvement. And I say, hey, I'm going to volunteer on Saturday if anyone wants to join me. And I can post that to my Facebook. Does that make sense to everybody? Yep. Okay, great. Other features that will be helpful are going to be uh, question, uh, question and answer section here. They can go to it any time that they want. Language translator, especially if you have someone from overseas, and that's happening more often. They can look at a particular page and it translates to their language. Not only that, but you could go ahead and have what's called a staff directory if you have a lot of staff. With anticipated searches, it brings up to the actual individual, you know, right then and there. How many staff do you have? One and a half. <laughs> okay. If you're into blogging, sometimes blogging helps, uh, um, you know, show the, the excitement of what's happening in the area and people um, progress there. Okay. The so last thing I wanted to show you is editing. So content editing, you know, you want to be able to have the flexibility of adding pages and doing anything that you want. So as an example, for Morristown, this is how they would edit their website. Select login, put in their name and password, and now you're in. If you want to change out a photo, you just select edit this list. Here's your photos. You can put in a caption, delete the picture, or uh, select a new one and upload it into the system. If you want to edit a page, you just go to the page you want to edit. In this case, you select Edit Center Area. So you just go ahead and click on it, and there you have it. Some of the edits that you'll be doing on a daily basis may be uploading a picture, linking to a website, or just uploading a document. So to upload a picture, you just click on the Image Manager icon. You can drag and drop or click over here and pull pictures right off your computer. But of course, you can use pictures you've already used on your website from the image library. Over here, you can select where you want that picture to go. You can put it no alignment and just drag it all over the place. I like to anchor pictures, so I'm going to put it to the left and have the text wrap around it. One thing of importance is that you want your website to be ADA compliant. So when you upload a picture, make sure you put a meaningful phrase here because the vision impaired individual will come to your website when they mouse over the picture, it's going to talk to them. So you want something that they can understand. If you want to link to another website, put the name of the organization and highlight it, go to the link manager icon, and then just put in the website address of where you want it to go. Don't worry if you fat finger something or put it wrong because there's a link checker who will say, hey, that's not a, a real website. And then you can correct it. If it falls through, you know it's a live link. If you have a particular flyer or a special announcement page, you can go ahead and upload it here. So let's go ahead and make it a document flyer. We'll just go ahead and highlight the name of it, click on the link manager icon, and just select upload file. You can click over here and upload a, let's say, a Word document. If you want it to automatically convert to a PDF, you can select that checkbox. If you want to reuse a document off your website, you should be able to do that too. When you're done, you hit save, go through spell check, and it goes live. So your portion of the city website, you're going to have your own home pages. If it's your own website, you're going to have your own navigation. So what you want to do is be able to add new pages. So you go ahead and select left-hand navigation, select new page, Name your page. Select which template that you want. And you hit continue. Now it build that page for you and add it into the navigation quickly and easily like that. <coughs> if you want to, uh, let's say, upload a YouTube video, so if you have any construction in the area, some buildings that are going up, and you have a little YouTube video of the progress of it, you might go to a page, copy the URL of the YouTube video, select Edit Center Area, then just select the YouTube video icon, 
paste that URL in there. And we're finding whenever you can communicate via video, uh, you know, pictures are a thousand words. Videos must be a million words. <laughs> Other things that you may want to do is on every page be able to set your edit metadata so that way you can have a higher web presence. And you can actually put in the keywords of the topics explained in that page and have a, a higher uh, in, uh, internet attraction pull right to that page of the information people are looking for. Another thing you might want to have is an archive, a history archive of all the changes you ever made. This way you can reuse programs that are you know, annual and in, um, in use, like it happens once a year for three months, you can just pull up the content from last year. If you need to create a little web form, you can do that really easily. This way you can keep in contact and allow them to get their thoughts and ideas to you. So in this case, you put on in the email address of where you want that information to go to. It's going to come in your email, so you're going to want to have a subject in there, just so you know it came from the website. Maybe you put something like web request and that comes in your email, you're ready to go. Not only can you go ahead and create a custom one from scratch, but a lot of times, a lot of these CMSs, you can have a quick form builder here where you just select which field that you might want. If it's an attachment, maybe it's upload a resume or something, you can just change that field name. And then if you have any other comments, you know, they can put them in there. Save. And there you have it, ready to go. Paul, who is there with you? Uh, we have the EDC here. Uh, we have the administrative assistant in economic development. We have the planning director, finance director, city attorney, and his colleague. Excellent. So this is the quick overview I wanted to give to all of you. Um, any uh, questions that you'd like for me to answer to you, for you? Is it possible that you could email to me the, the, that page of the, uh, your survey results? Yes, I can do that. I'll just send you that slide. Okay, thank you. Anybody You're else? very welcome. Thank you, Joe. We appreciate the time you've taken for us today. You're very welcome. I hope it was helpful to get you some food for thought of things that you can do with your website. And if you have any other generic questions you want me to answer, I'd be more than happy to look in the report and give you answers back. Just let me know. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Okay, we'll skip back up to reports, and we'll start with the report from Sunshine Terrace. Um, a couple things going on at Sunshine Terrace. Um, we currently have seven openings, which is uh, high for us. Um, we've had some unfortunate um, passings in the last couple of months, but. Uh, uh, we should have enough to fill. I think we still have a waiting list. So if you've seen the advertisement in the paper, it's simply because this is the first time I think we've had that many openings all at once. So um, a couple of things that we're uh, moving forward on. Uh, the roof project, we met and had our pre-con meeting uh, last Thursday. They will begin construction, they said, uh, within two weeks. So. That puts us around the 25th, 26th of May. Uh, they went over there looking at staging. It should take approximately a week. Uh, they'll be doing the roof work from 9 until 6. So, so we have that. We'll get notices sent out to the residents. They will be notified of the work being done, and we should be completed by the second week in June. That was what we had put in our contract. And that's if we have rain or, or delays. We also had to go through the contract reno renegotiation with uh, cable services. Part of our contract is that uh, we haven't given the tenants much of an option. We do not want to see direct TV because we do not want to see a number of uh, 
satellite dishes being attached to the side of the building. Midcontinent is the cable provider that we've had in the past, and they do provide, uh, again, a very good contract service for the residents. Their uh, service rate per uh, apartment is still cheaper than if you were to hook up that same service at your home. So we, uh, the contract is incorrect. It says it starts June 1st. It's actually August 1st. So that gives us some time to notify the residents. The one thing that we have in our current lease is that they're not required to have cable if they don't have a television. But if they do have a TV, then they will pay for the cable services. So, so we're going to go ahead and sign that. The longer the service contract, the better the prices we get. So, and, and, and it is very reasonable. So the third thing that I have included in your packet is Otis has uh, sent us an estimate for what they call a solid state starter. We're having issues with one of our elevators. Um, it kind of jerks. It takes a while for uh, it to send the what they call the message to the electrical box in order for the elevator to move. This solid state starter then, and there's information in there, would cause for a smoother ride, a quicker ride. It doesn't have, it doesn't sort of send that message. So it doesn't cause like a surge or an increase in our electrical. So it, it should eventually save us some funds. We know right now that one is in need of repair. Um, and actually I shouldn't say repair. The motor is having issues. If we add the solid state starter, that, that will cure that issue. Um, they had suggested to include the two, uh, one for the other elevator at the same time, even though that one is not yet necessarily having issues. Uh, the elevators were installed at the same time. Um, they have the same motors. So uh, it, it is a reduction of $400. So it's over my allowance to approve. So I would need approval from the board to go ahead. What's your warranty on it? That I have not uh, seen. <clears throat> Usually it's a one year. That kind of stuff, yeah. I didn't read through the full. I can request the warranty and get back to you before we approve it. It's usually one year. Usually. Yeah. It says one year. Does it say one in there? Page. It yeah. should be on the page third page. page. In the middle. Thank you. But I need a poll. <clears throat> that's, that's my next question, yeah. There, there's money in the account. You didn't budget for it, but there is money in the account. Yeah. So it's not like you're going to go out. No. And I, it's hard, I guess, to a point, you know, Nancy just kind of took over. We don't know what repairs were ever done, so we haven't really known what to budget for repairs. Well, and... Personally, I think we should do them both, knowing what I know about the mechanical versus the solid state starters, because you're going to eat that up in one motor if it goes bad. Yep. With all the overload protection, reverse, the loss of phasing, blah, 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 blah. The, the other thing with Sunshine Terrace is that it, it's, it's a revenue-making building. Right. Um, the, on, the only thing, the only reason why we show sometimes you know, a loss or a negative is because of depreciation on the building itself. But, but it still, you know, it still is there. Um, this year we haven't installed uh, nearly as many uh, carpets or, or linoleum. Um, we had been kind of working through the building on that. But again, there were there was no repairs the first 15 years. It was in existence, so it's it's taking a while to get back, um, getting everything back to where it should be and it costs money if you're not doing regular maintenance work on those things you're just doing repair work which is where we're at at this point rather than the maintenance work we need a motion 
motion to approve? Is that what we're looking for? I'll make the motion. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That would be it for Sunshine Terrace, other than once we get the rough work done, uh, then we'll start looking at the uh, proposals for boilers and going from there. And if you recall, the roof and the boilers are in a separate funding account, so that does not come out of the maintenance and repairs. So. After the roofing, yes. Okay, the second issue that I have is that the infill building, we have a motor, motor cracked on one of our rooftop units, so we had to tag that out. Um, again, I'm certain that infill is owned by the city, correct, and not by the EDA, so this will be a recommendation to the council. Um, right now, we will have to replace the one rooftop unit. Uh, that's that's a definite um, we received two proposals um, to replace both again both rooftop units are the same age they're both in approximately the same condition motor wise um, because they're both used at that's at the same time um, and obviously with the one rooftop unit being shut down again that will put more um, power onto the other one or, or what I'm trying to electrical pull from that one. Um, the biggest um, issue and the reason why they had suggested doing both is that you have to hire and uh, rent a crane to put those rooftop units up there. So I guess their opinion is, is if you're renting the crane, it might be worth it to do both. If, or you can do one and rent the crane and then see how long the second rooftop unit goes and then, you know, replace that with the crane. But they both have uh, given me quotes for option one and then option two to replace the second one and how much it costs for the crane itself. So the funding for this one, Carla, I'm assuming is CDBG? Yes. So. Is there any possibility on the one that's not cracked having uh, a resale value? Not really. Not really. It'd be a salvage deal. Yeah. It's like selling an old refrigerator. Yeah. Are these the only two companies that we get quotes from, or is there? We can get quotes from as many as you want. That's all I have at this point. I was just going to say, I think uh, McFarland. And we can do that as well. When do you need to do this by? I guess at, at this point in time, if you want to make a re recommendation to get a, a third quote and to recommend to the council that it would be in the be their best interest to do two, then we can forward it on and, and let the council decide which company. But so you could do that before session next week? Yes. But if you feel we should just go with the one right now and see how the other one goes. Uh, Still have to have a cool one. It's not on tonight's agenda, right? No, it's not on the council agenda. It, it has to go to a work session first. So it'll go to work session on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. With two or three, whatever you decide. I'm getting the impression that I should get a third one. I, I would probably get a third one only because, I mean, I, I, I don't, I haven't really done business with these two before, but I've done business with Midwest Refrigeration and McFarland, and that tends to be who we end up going with. Okay. In my experience, but, and it usually deals with price and service. So, would it be fair to say that the EDA wishes to recommend that Nancy proceed to get this done, but to get uh, a third quote? and then inform the council as the best of the quotes that went at the work session next week? We can do that. Thank you. Nancy, would you like a motion on that, or is that just adequate? I'd like a motion for the other two, and then we'll just move forward on that. I'll make the motion. I'll second it. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we'll go back up to uh, delinquency update. We have received payments, so we have nobody who's delinquent at this time. And financial report. Uh, attached are the financial reports, and um, there's nothing out of the ordinary except um, in April we did pay real estate taxes, and we pay for the whole year. And so everything else was pretty much the same as every other month, but we paid real estate taxes for um, infill and sunshine tariffs. Go to unfinished business, uh, cutting edge update. I was just going to say, when you say we, you mean the city or the EDA? Oh, the, this, this group, the council that are sitting here, and, and the city actually plays all the real estate at once. Oh, the, you know, the only reason I say that is the EDA doesn't own the infill building. Nobody comes out of that account. Oh. So the, the council we're looking at here, the only, only a difference in any other month is that we paid real estate taxes out of those months. Cutting edge update. With regard to cutting edge, I included the last emails in your packet. He is supposed to be getting back to me with regard to uh, setting up a payment schedule, but that has not happened to date. And director's report. What are we doing to follow up on it? I am contacting him follow up on it okay okay it's not something it's sliding and try to get in touch with him at least once per week okay so we'll see what it brings to next meeting it'll be five weeks before the next meeting yeah so it should be handled by then i hope that it, that there's a payment schedule that you can approve at the next meeting okay so, Last week, I attended a housing <coughs> institute. It's an 18 month program. Part of that is to identify housing projects or for housing activities that are uh, not performing as well as would have been desired, um, to come up with plans on how to help them perform better. Uh, we would like to increase the sales of, well, we all know we'd like to increase the sales of the city owned lots. So that is the project that I'm putting together information on with regard to that so that we can come up with a program to sell those lots and over a period of time, defined period of time with targets and then we can talk about what types of incentives. And we've talked about that, so what will help us to make those lots sell better. business we got the person out of the way loan origination fee um, went back in the minutes we had approved a 2% loan origination fee and I have several questions that I have asked you in the uh, cover memo as soon as I can find it I'll talk about it First, que one question has to do with when do you want it collected? And there are different times that it could be collected. Uh, first off, let's do in the order I gave it to you. Should there be a minimum fee? There are costs involved regardless of the size of the loan. I would suggest to you that we should have a minimum fee. That minimum fee should be uh, $1,000 at a 2% that's equivalent to uh, the 2% on a $50,000 loan. If somebody borrows $25,000, still, there are still costs involved. So we're a minimum fee of $1,000. And then 2% after that anyway? Yes. Minimum $1,000, then 2%. Greater of uh, okay. 1%, uh, greater, greater of 2 the value. or $1,000, whichever is greater. I agree. Should the fee be a 2% and a TV? This isn't for DPA, though, right? 
We're no. not doing it. Okay, just this, want to make this sure. This is for the business loans. Right. Business okay. and commercial okay. portion. Okay, just want to make sure you were clear on what kind of loan. Thank you. And I guess I don't remember the, <clears throat> the meeting minute that was 2%. I just know that in my experience when I'm dealing with a lot of the real estate loans, which this is going to be primarily part of, the banks in town are only charging 1%. So, I don't know if you're trying to... What's the typical cost for these processing fees on, on a loan? I, I, I'm not familiar, so well, I'd like to be enlightened, I guess. It depends on the amount of work that has to be done. Certain loans are, require public hearings and additional uh, work for creating agreements. Some do and some don't. So, it's... It, depends on the amount of work that's required and it also depends on whether the work is done locally or done out of the Twin Cities because we use a second law firm for some of the things that are uh, that are done uh, that are more closely tied to some of the state funding programs. So when we use them our bills are higher, that, you know, we're not trying to suggest you increase your bill, but they're higher than what our local bills are. So in order to cover those, those loans have to have a higher amount and generate more money. The 2% was designed, specifically designed, and I went back to what I had done at that point in time, it was in July of 2016, the 2% was designed to be able to cover our legal costs when we have to use the firm in the Twin Cities, as opposed to using local resources. Now, a commercial lender, normally the uh, legal costs are not included in the, in the uh, origination. No, what's the origination fee is a processing fee from some from some form or another that I understand. I don't know if they. That's just a profit deal. <laughs> <laughs> for, for a bank, that's just a profit. You know. Well, for us, it covers the cost of our yeah. staff. Okay. It, to phrase costs, <coughs> we could do this a different way, as Mr. Gonsett has suggested. We could go with a one percent loan, uh, you know, origination fee, and charge legal fees. And yeah. what would have to do is Mr. Galstead, for example, would have to give us his legal fee so we can pass that along and collect that as well. And the other thing you could do is, is do a sliding scale. You know, if it, depending upon where the what the loan is for, you could have it higher if it's to, mm -hmm. to do, do commercial. The other thing, as long as we're talking about this, well, I'll, I'll wait and I'll bring that up afterwards. Anyhow, that, the issue is do we want to do a 2% fee or do we want to do 1% fee and do it other ways? or work off the sliding fee. And it depends, our costs depend upon where the legal work is being done. Because this is primarily to cover legal work and to defray some of the costs for my time and for Brenda's time. I, I don't I don't mind the 2% cost, but I guess if it's also to include the legal fees, I mean, <coughs> my feeling would be is just to pass the legal fees on to the person asking for the loan so it's an exact cost. We're not trying to cover anything. And then the city, yeah. it's taken care of that way then, I guess. And, the 2% was designed to include the legal fees, but if we want to do it the other way, I would suggest we go with 1%. Okay. I mean, I don't... And then at that point, if we're going to go to 1%, I would suggest we may want to go to a minimum fee of $500 because we're going to be collecting the legal fees separately. And 500 would be enough to cover everything then? I don't want to undercut or either and what you need to make sure it gets well the, the thousand was designed to include the legal fees okay so we could reduce that that's what I'm saying I think that would be a smart move if that's what the banks are offering as a 1% they're passing the legal fees on I mean it seems like it would be more upfront and I don't know make us a little more competitive I guess now, I'm not sure how the banks are doing the legal fees other than the fact that for instance, in a real estate closing, whether it's commercial or, or whatever, the closing agent that does that work is splitting that work between the, the buyer and the seller, typically. Right. But but I'm not exactly sure. Independent counsel for the bank, how that's handled, to be honest with you. I'm not sure if they just absorb that as part of business, and then they do have their origination fee. But like say the title examination and those types of things that are drafted, typically the banks don't absorb anything. No, the <laughs> the, co the costs are shared on the closing statement between the parties as as 
indicated in the purchase agreement. And that's what I was kind of getting at in, in this case. If we're issuing a mortgage, what we we haven't done in the past is 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 pass that mortgage registration tax on to the onto the uh, client. Typically it's what is it, point zero zero three three percent of the value of the mortgage. Mm -hmm. And that's on every transaction and the EDA's been absorbing that up until now and I would suggest that that also get included on any type of a settlement statement passing it on as a part of the loan to them. To to well it's just part of them getting a loan. You know it's because I know why <clears throat> we shouldn't be, you know, covering the cost of the tax to the Minnesota. So what we should be doing then is preparing a settlement statement for one of these loans. Correct. Right. Have it as part of it, and then we'll Break have the origination fee, legal fees, mortgage registration tax, and things like that identified clearly on that statement. I think that would be the fair way of doing it. Well, then they know. So that we're not paying. overcharging, and, and they, they know don't they're think they're we're just taking their money. And they know what they're paying for, exactly. Right. I don't and think there's anything wrong with that. As a, as a realtor, I always consider that one one percent origination fee is a, is a, uh, if it got over that, it was agreed to the bank, uh, and uh, and that's the way a lot of people look at it. Uh, and two percent sounds like you're skinning well, them a little bit. The two percent was including all these other costs. Yeah, I know. And so, uh, it makes it more transparent for us. I mean, just doing business, it increases transparency on what we're doing. I wanted to bring it back because no, we now we started to do fees now, and I want to make sure that we're all together on what we're saying and how we're how we're going about this. And if we go with a one percent, we wouldn't need to do a, a, a sliding scale. No, I think I, Ron, I think we go one percent flat, five hundred dollars minimum, and then we on the on the. Closing statement. The, the statement we can identify the other costs, and that's what they are. Yeah, and that's okay. that's fine with me. I'll make then, that motion. And then the other thing that I would, I know Mr. Gordy has suggested, and it's it's up to you, but typically the origination fee and those things aren't rolled into your more in, in your no. in your loan. You know, they're just reduced. We're paid right up front, and you get the the, the net balance of the proceeds. And, and that's what I believe we should be doing. But and that's what that's the last part of what we're talking about is when should this be paid? We should pay them the net. The what what it remains after these items have been deducted. Correct. I agree. Okay. And then the only other cost that I'm thinking about right now is typically there's a state deed tax. I think that's point zero zero two three percent of the transaction. And usually that's paid for by the by the seller. But I'm just. Yeah. But se seller gets the deed tax. The buyer usually gets a mortgage, so they get the mortgage registration tax. That's typically how it is. And the way I've been doing it, and up to this point, is we've been absorb. We we've been paying for the deed tax. I just mm -hmm. pay it at the closing, and then I get reimbursed from the city. But that's how we've usually been doing it. Yeah, I would guess we continue that. I think so. Okay. Mike, you had a motion. So we may need to make motions on all this then? <laughs> what I would what I would understand the motion to be is one percent fee. Uh, we will include on the closing statement the legal. We will include on the closing statement the mortgage registration tax. We will pay out in terms of the money that we that we transmit the net only. And that we will continue to the uh, we will continue to pay the state deed tax as we've been doing it where Ron actually pays it. And then he bills us for it. And, and that one percent, five hundred dollar, five hundred dollar minimum. Yep. yep. Okay. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. I'm in favor. Thank you. Quick enough. And third thing on the agenda is the marketing plan. Basic question we have to talk about today. And that'll help guide us to where we need to be headed on this. Is what is it that we think that we want East Grand Forks to be? Is it is it a suburb to Grand Forks? Is it an independent city like Crookston? Is it some combination? But we have to identify what we are 
because that will help us determine what our goals can be and the other things that we have to do to get to where we want to be. But if we don't know where we're headed to, then we don't have any idea about which what we have to do to get there. Well, we can't be what we aren't. You know, so, and, and we've, we've struggled with this over the years that, you know, we live in Grand Forks of Shadow, we're just a bedroom community for, we're just an ex, you know, an eighth ward for Grand Forks. Um, and I've always looked at the beauty of living here is you, you, there is a distinct different culture in East Grand Forks than there is in Grand Forks. We are, we do have our own identity and we do maintain a, a small town feel with the advantage of having access to larger city services. And so uh, my opinion is that we, that's how we, that's how we sell ourselves is we, we maintain a small town atmosphere, but we have, we have the, the benefit of having a larger town right in our doorstep. Having Grand Forks is the suburb. Right. Yes. Well, that's what Henry says. <laughs> that's what yeah, Steve said it. Yeah, that's, yeah. Just, that's right. Yep. I mean, do we, the, the corollary to that, though, is do we, I, do, we, do we see ourselves as a bedroom community or do we see ourselves as a full service community with a full retail sector and a full industrial sector as well as the residential? I mean, it's here. I, I know it is. Do you want to stay that way? Yeah. Or do you want do you see a change in that? Or do you want more emphasis on commercial and industrial? What is it that... that Schools that, and sports. I think we've got to put more on industrial and commercial because <coughs> as what residential increase the costs uh, higher than what you take in, you've got to expand the commercial and industrial or we're just, uh, all we're doing is uh, becoming more and more expensive. And I agree with that. I would add to... Um, retail and residential retail slash entertainment we we are a destination for uh, a night out and and boardwalk is definitely and yeah and we are a regional draw for the smaller smaller communities within an hour drive of here when I was at the meeting last week one of the things that was talked about is how people come to East Grand Fork to take advantage of the restaurants restaurant well Mm -hmm. that it is a place that people come to take advantage of. Yeah, we have a wealth of options for, for dining and, uh, and entertainment, whether it's outdoor recreation or so movies. What I hear you saying is what we want to do is grow our industrial, and grow our commercial, and grow our entertainment sectors and put emphasis on those three areas. The next question is going to be if we start... Okay. Commercial and entertainment. Entertainment means restaurants and and other types like like the theater we have. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that that's well supported. Dinner and a movie. Mm -hmm. Dinner and a movie. And that's a theme. That's one of the themes to move forward. Dinner and a movie. For industrial, part of what and, I, and I'm not asking you to do this today. I want for next meeting to think about. What types of industrial should we start to focus on? Should we target for, for industrial growth? Because depending upon the type of industrial we do, it has different land requirements. And different utility requirements. And different utility requirements, exactly. So what is it, like I said, for next meeting, what is it that should we should think about targeting for industrial activities in particular? We need to play off of NCTC too, where we've got yes. their programs and what we can provide to those businesses. And they will ultimately play off of the things that we do as well. Right. So it, it's a combination of activities. Right. Well, and all of the answers to the questions you're asking are not sitting in this room. I would go and talk to our manufacturers and our industrial uh, businesses yeah. that are already there and, and tap into the network. They, they have insights into what what is an advantage to being here than much more than we do. 
what I may do is invite them to sit down with us at a meeting and where we yep. provide a lunch to them yep. so that they can sit down with us and we can talk about these issues with them and yep. also invite President Bona yep. to come in here and talk I mean, to we us could, We could time. target their their trade publications that, that they read and, and advertise in. If I may, I would almost suggest that Mr. Gordy set up times to go meet and take them out to lunch because you're much more apt to get a good conversation and yes. show up um, by you going out and speaking to them than inviting them here into the room. You mean they won't say something on TV that they'll say it? Uh... <laughs> well, I, I guess I'm just <laughs> looking so much on TV. What I'm more looking at is because of a busy schedule or whatever, you're going to get more of a productive conversation going to them and, and asking for their assistance in that and way as opposed to trying to get them to come here yeah. over a new and you're on a Well, it leads me to one other thing. On Mon next Monday, I have a, a phone call, um, phone meeting with uh, the Minnesota Chamber, and Barry Wilford will also be participating in that phone call. Uh, and what we're going to be doing is we're talking about a visitation and retention program and how to implement that. So that is getting out and talking to the meeting to the businesses on their own turf as well. Okay? So that is something we're moving forward on already. Do we have an idea what kind of industries that we could look at we, that doesn't have any utility or land needs right now? I mean, could we somehow break those apart? Because those are ones that we could actually horn in on right away. Well, Categories that I would think that we'd be looking at would be agribusiness. I think we'd be looking at some fine tooling machineries. I think we could be looking at um, some of the things like Josh has with the electrical and contractors, contractor businesses. We have, um, like Hawks, we have businesses that do things of that nature, where it's uh, that, that's a golf course uh, equipment and, and, and golf course. Uh, there's golf course improvements and the sand and everything uh, or that goes on to golf courses. But we'd be, I think those are the types of businesses that we're probably looking at. I think we're also looking to see how we can tap into UAVs. And as we move forward, uh, tying into Grand Sky and what's going on over across the river at UND and Grand Sky. One of the other advantages we have is with the UND Entrepreneurial School and with the 701 building that, that they're using right now, as an incubator building, is that uh, there's a lot of entrepreneur entrepreneurship and incubator businesses that are occurring now that we make sure we have to have some, that we can look to see how we can make sure there's space for. We have, in the industrial park, we have some areas that are available right now. We don't own them, but they're areas that are available. I have already talked, for example, with the Savros about their land and, and what we can do to help them. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to doing that on a continuing basis with them. Um, there are a lot of things like that that we have opportunities, but they're fairly small space needs. We also know from the work that's been done in the past where we've gotten the appraisals, what it would cost to send utilities if somebody were a large space user. Um, what, we, what I do know is we did get an inquiry uh, through the state, it was a statewide uh, request that required more water than we have access to. So I, t I talked to Dan Boyce and our utilities about whether or not we could find a way to get the water to do it. He says that we, do we don't have access to the water that met their needs for their particular business. So it meant that that was an opportunity that we can't take advantage of because, as you, as you point out, where we don't have utilities or infrastructure available. So how, how can we do those kinds of things in the future? Well, and I was thinking of even some of our more like remote sites that had to do with maybe office space. Because, I mean, we actually, I know Mike and I have talked, we actually could make room even in this building mm -hmm. for, you know, somebody to come in. Well, I, I know what years we've talked about, even the state of Minnesota, they keep saying how they can't get workers in St. Paul. And, you know, they have a, a revenue collection agency in Ely that works wonderful. Mm -hmm. You know, so... Those are things that we actually don't need land. We don't need utilities, and 
Uh, Those are things we can look at now. I think I would caution about having that discussion in, because I have had other conversations about it too, is you, this building wouldn't be a good fit to bring someone in from the private sector. It would have to be another public type entity that, that comes in. So the, I think we'd have to be real, real careful about that. Having the hotel in town means that people don't have to stay in North Dakota anymore or stay someplace that they were required to, to stay in Minnesota but not locally because they didn't want to right. stay at some of the places that were here locally. And that's not, I'm not passing judgment, please, nobody think I'm passing judgment. It's just that was what they had told me. But with the hotel here, it makes us now in the position where we can start to host some meetings and host an agency up here that maybe we couldn't do it before. One of the things that I know that I have to do through the summer is start to inventory places that are available to see what we ha actually have that's available, um, to see if we have spaces that are adequate to meet the needs as well. We don't have a lot of spaces on this side of the river. Uh, I've, that was one of the things I did talk with the realtors about, is that they, how we can link together and tie together to be able to find uh, what spaces are available. If, I, if they can let me know, I can when I hear something, I can share it with them so they can possibly close a, a lease or sale on that space too. But that's part of what all this this other discussion is, is is headed toward is identifying those types of resources that we have available as well. Yeah. Just one follow up to the original question about who we are and you know who how, how what image we want to portray uh, and how to improve that image. One thing that's important is that, that we're honest about um, some of the bad things that our image has attached to it and, and um, not hide from that. Is if you do, then you aren't going to figure out how to make those improvements to your image. So there's that. Um, if I could go, I have identified some new pages that can go on the website and I've talked with Corey about guiding me to get started on putting that information onto the website. So I'm looking forward to expanding the website over the next few weeks to include things such as our residential incentive programs, the builder incentive programs, commercial and industrial incentives, um, showing some a map showing industrial and commercial, you know, things of that nature so that uh, we can start to generate the traffic, also have a front page that leads both to the residential side and to the commercial and industrial side. So we'll talk that we have a dual role and it will show what our um, mission statement that we include on the agenda each time. It will identify that so people can see what we're all about. You just incorporate those with our existing website then? I will basically Basically, the web page that we have right now will be part of the residential side. There will be a new front page that talks about all the activities we do. In general, commercial or industrial, if you want to go to the residential side, hit this drop down. If you want to go to the commercial or industrial side, you go to this, go to this area. Quick question about the presentation we saw today. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he didn't, do we, know, do we know any numbers about what what their fees would be, or mm -hmm. we do? Yes, but I don't remember what they are. Okay. They're I mean, is it comparable to the Golden Shovel? The original uh, creation of the web pages is comparable, but there's a much smaller annual fee. Okay. okay. It also looks like we'd be responsible for mm -hmm. for more of the, the maintenance of in the mm -hmm. updates. Would, yes. be done, would be done in-house rather than farm about to yes so that's that's where the savings come yes someone's got to do it and someone's going to have to get paid to get to it yes. one way or another <laughs> that's right i also think i included in your packet information about uh, keeping it legal on social media yep saw okay. that okay that's informational um i i have every confidence that our legal counsel will keep us legal hmm. okay it just glad you do see. It's your job, new guy. It's a huge world with, with the open meeting yeah. information and the records retention information that we have to deal with that 
Ron will give us guidance on this, and I, I am confident that we will do what we need to do. It's just that it's a, there's going to be a lot that goes on there in that way. Everyone's looking to me <laughs> for a motion to adjourn. <laughs> I'll make the motion. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meetings adjourned. Object. <laughs> you don't overrule. <laughs> I laid the gauntlet for you. I strenuously object. Yeah. <laughs> Turn off your mics.